for the second straight day, there are more than 400 confirmed cases of coronavirus in our county. Good evening and thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Steve Price and I'm Alicia Summers. 436 tests came back positive, just four less than yesterday's record of 440. The total is now more than 12,800. 436 positives is 5% of the more than 9,000 tests completed, bringing our rolling 14 day average to 3.5%. Unfortunately, two more deaths were reported, so our death toll now stands at 361 of them. A man in his 80s did not have underlying health conditions. That surge in coronavirus cases is causing major concerns for newly reopened businesses and for local leaders. Some owners of establishments, including bars and nail salons, now fear that county officials may move to shut them down again for safety reasons. News 8's Heather Hope spoke to a local pub manager and she has reaction from county leaders. Right, that worry is high for businesses like bars and nail salons who just reopened, now saying for so many not following the health guidelines, they could force them to close. We talk with the acting manager here at O'Brien's in Kearney Mesa, where she feels that those who aren't following the rules could spoil it for everyone. I'm thinking it's looking real close to shutting us back down again. Fearing that those not following the rules could ruin the progress that reopened businesses are making, Kimberly Cottrell, manager on duty at O'Brien's, Ryan's Irish pub is trying to stay positive. It's very sad because everyone's been struggling and we're, we've, been, we've been doing our part and it's the people who aren't that are ruining it for everyone. The pub has a sanitizer and glove station and keeps customer tables spread apart. The mask requirement is causing employees to have to police patrons. I'm not a very abrupt or, you know, bossy type person, so to have to tell people, hey, put your mask on and yell at people to get the point across sometimes is not the role I like to play. But concern is growing after San Diego County saw a surge in coronavirus cases consecutively. I mean, the simple reality is the numbers are not good. County Supervisor Nathan Fletcher gave this video message while on quarantine at home after recently coming into contact with someone with coronavirus. He's been against a rush to reopen businesses while Supervisor Jim Desmond has not. So right now, the hysteria does not follow the numbers. Desmond says the increased case numbers need context. So we're testing a lot, lot more people and we're finding a lot more cases. But Fletcher says this chart on percentage positive refutes that. This is a single high day for the entire coronavirus uh, episode, even though we've had days where we did much more testing. Desmond released this statement, which says in part, we must continue to protect our most vulnerable by wearing masks and practicing social distance. With unemployment checks due to run out and a 16% unemployment rate, we must get people back to work safely. Supervisor Chairman Greg Cox says by statement, we don't want to shut everything down again. We are trying to walk a tightrope in balancing the need to protect public health with the need to help restart the economy. But we are monitoring those triggers and will be poised to take further action if necessary. And despite record cases continuing to increase in our county, small businesses like O'Brien still say they want customers to continue to come in and support them, but to continue to bring their masks and stay socially distant. I'll send it back to you. All right, it's a tough position, Heather. Thank you. Now, with many workplaces opening up, employers are in a tough spot. They're trying to run their business, but they're also trying to keep their employees safe. And the result is that some local animal hospitals have had to slash their number of daily appointments, and that's leading to frustration from customers. News 8's Tim Blodgett checks up on a local pet clinic. Well, one thing that had to be put on hold during this crisis is getting proper medical care for your pets. San Diego veterinarians know this, and they're asking for your patience and cooperation during these troubling times. Even through a pandemic, Dr. Crystal Stibe has been treating dogs like little Rosie at Morena Pet Hospital. We did not close at all. I knew I still had patients that were sick and needed assistance, so I came in. Um, I had two staff members with me, so it was me and two other people here, and uh, that actually was for several days that we practiced like that. Oh, goodness gracious. Unfortunately, Rosie has a large growth that will have to be taken care of through surgery. Her owner was lucky to get an appointment as pet hospitals and clinics have had to drastically reduce the amount of patients that a veterinarian sees in a day. Our clients are asked to stay in their cars. After I do the exam, then I call the owner, we discuss things, we'll go over a treatment plan or so things that used to take 30 minutes are now taking an hour. The hospital is then put in the uncomfortable situation, prioritizing seeing sick animals first. I mean, literally the phones don't stop, you know. They're having to triage who's in need right now 
and who can maybe wait. This has led to some angry clients demanding that the small clinics see their pet. It has gotten so bad in recent weeks, Dr. Stibe posted this video on the hospital's Facebook. Just dejected that we're feeling right now because we, we feel like we're not providing the services that we want to provide. Those angry clients that are berating my staff, you know, for just saying, I'm sorry, I can't get you in right now. Though it might take a few weeks to book an appointment, the hospital will still see sick pets on short notice. Pets like Billy. This is my Billy boy. He's almost 17 and we rushed over here. I wonder why he was sleeping in so long. We're all in this business because we love animals and we want to take care of them when they need us. They're seeing me at the last minute. I'm so grateful, so grateful. And Dr. Stein recommends if you're not able to see your veterinarian in person, then a teledoc conference might be your best bet. Steve? All right, rides at Belmont Park were ordered to shut down this week after being open against state guidance. The rules bar theme parks and similar rides from operating, although Belmont Park can still open its arcade, its restaurants and some of the other businesses there. The rides at the park were shut down last night after San Diego City officials were alerted to the violation by the Union Tribune. Park officials say they are now seeking clarification from the state on when those rides can reopen. A head on car crash off Highway 94 this morning left one person dead and another two in serious condition. The traffic accident happened in Del Zura off the 94 freeway around 630 this morning. CHP says one of the vehicles flew off the side of the road, rolling 50 feet down a ditch. The two people that survived were taken to a local hospital. Today in Otay Mesa, another noisy protest demanding the release of ICE detainees. Although a federal judge last night ordered the release of migrant children being held with their parents at ICE detention centers in Texas and Pennsylvania because of coronavirus, it does not apply to adults in the Otay Mesa detention center. More than 200 detainees and staff have tested positive for COVID-19 as of the end of May. Activists say conditions inside are unacceptable. We're basically just asking that the children, since they have the power, we're just asking that they you know, release these children with their family members. Earlier this month, ICE directed Core Civic, that's the company that operates the facility, to block calls going to numbers belonging to the activist group Otay Mason Detention Resistance over what it called safety concerns. Today, around 100 skaters kicked off a protest in support of Black Lives Matter in Mission Bay. Skaters got going just before three this afternoon at Tecolote Shores Park in Mission Bay. They followed Mission Bay Drive up to Mike Gotch Memorial Bridge in solidarity with protests around the country, calling for racial equality and an end to police violence against minorities. The La Mesa community is coming together to help a family-owned business getting back in the game. The Play It Again Sports was one of several stores that were vandalized, looted, and burned the night of May 30th. Well, today, Amber Welch Homes, Caliber Homes Loan, Cal Caliber Home Loans, and the Lake Murray Little League teamed up to hold a sporting equipment donation drive at Sunset Park to help rebuild their inventory. And for some, it was a perfect opportunity to do some late spring cleaning. Our kids grew up here in La Mesa playing sports, and we were always at those stores. So I thought it was a perfect time to go through the storage room and empty some things out. There was also a raffle for a deep sea fishing trip for two with all proceeds going to play it again.